What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 170 of the Games and Grabs podcast. My name is Sonny G, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Hello, Finn. Hello. We're, finally, <laughs> we're finally here doing it. We did it. It's been a, it's been a couple of weeks, it has. <laughs> but we, we finally got around to doing it. Life stuff has uh, taken over these last couple of weeks, but now we're here, and life, um, life finds a way. I'm happy about it. It do, it does indeed find a way. <laughs> yes, yeah, good. Sam Neill in Jurassic Park. <laughs> right, was it Sam Neill who said it, or was it uh, Jeff Goldblum's character? I, I can't remember. Maybe Jeff way. Goldblum. I think. I think. I think you could be right that it was, and then Sam Neill says it later on in the film. Yeah, yeah. My head yeah. in my head is Jeff Goldblum. I, I think wrong. you're right. Yeah. I think he says it like when he's being weird, and then <laughs> I think Sam Neill repeats it later on when they find. Uh, the dinosaur eggs, because obviously the dinosaurs shouldn't be breeding because they're all female. But life finds a way. And yeah, there we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a bit of Jurassic Park knowledge. Oh, man. There you go. A bit of Jurassic Park knowledge. <laughs> um, good work on the PlayStation video, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes, I played it yesterday. Good. First, I did mean to do that for a long, long time. Finally got around mm. to it. Uh, I'm glad I did because um, I had some good feedback and uh, I'm happy with how it turned out. Uh, I'm going to make a new one, uh, hopefully ne- by next week. I hope plan on doing one, plan on doing one, uh, one a week uh, for the time being, see how that goes. Nice. Uh, and, is that uh, brown or tea? That is brown. Oh, nice. Yes. 7.45 in the evening brown. It is. It's keeps keep me going until bedtime. <laughs> bedtime, you know? When's bedtime. that? Like, like 5 a.m. <laughs> 5 a.m., yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got uh, I've got tea today. Nice uh, in, a, in a fancy mug. Very nice. Not the penis mug. Not the penis mug today. Yeah, no, no. Okay. But <laughs> just a, a standard. It's a cool mug actually. It's got like a a skeleton with flowers on it. It's cool. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, what? Because uh, obviously you already had a PS One, right? Uh, yeah. Well, that's that's yeah. That's the one I bought off eBay to uh, to do like, do my streams on a long time ago. Um, so I recorded it ages and ages ago. Finally got around to editing it. Oh, okay. And, uh, so yeah, I'm going to do a video testing the games next week. That's going nice. to be fun. Got okay. some ideas for that. It's going to be fun. And then I'll I'll think of a few more ideas going forwards. I've got some I've got some stuff I recorded on VR. I might try and make something out of. Um, cool. So yeah, if you're going, to, I'm trying to play a few different things. See see how it goes. See what works and what doesn't. And uh, we're fucking we're smashing it with the content at the minute. We are, yeah. Do content check- everywhere. Hell yeah. Check that out on YouTube. Fit out the fin steel. Uh, like, yep. to, like, subscribe, uh, thumbs up, comment, all the other stuff. <laughs> such, a, such a bad YouTuber, you know. It's like, <laughs> everyone else is like, "What's up, guys? <laughs> Fucking hit, smash that like button, <laughs> and all that sort of stuff." And you're like, "Uh, uh, Finn still like all the, all the all the stuff that you do at YouTube." I'm, I'm the anti YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do do the thing. Oh, click man. the whatever. Uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um so you've been buying stuff and i have too i bought this big motherfucker yesterday Ooh, let's um, see it is an an xbox 360 whoa nice old school i like it so uh 250 gigabyte uh xbox 360 very nice for a ton of games as well sweet um you know what i thought i just yeah, there's a load of backwards compatible games for the Series X, but not the shit that I want to play. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's a lot of really good stuff. Also, also the stuff they bring out is like the the weirdest, most obscure stuff. But like the huge games that everyone wants to play are still stuck yeah. on, you know, 360. Well, just on, yeah. So Project where's Gotham Project Gotham, Gotham yeah, for exactly. example? Yeah. But, so I bought a 360. I bought um, a bunch of old football games, a bunch of old wrestling games. Nice. Of course, I bought Project Gotham. Nice. Um, I mean, games are so cheap now. I went to um, so what the the shop formerly known as Game World in Hinkley. Yeah, not Change World, I believe. That's right. Yeah, mm. um, yeah. I bought a bunch of games from there. I got like Impact, like TNA Impact for a quid. Nice. Yeah, I got it actually not too long ago on PS3. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the cool thing, obviously, about the 360 as well is that obviously everything had achievements. Yeah. It just came with, a, you know, with achievements built in, told you nothing about it, just was like two for 50G, and you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, there's a bunch of games I want to play that I would play, would have played on PS3 before, but probably didn't have trophies at this point. 
Um, but the 360, I can go back and I can boost my gamer score with stuff like that. So, nice. yeah, I bought it. You know what? It might not be getting played all that often, but I'm going to set it up in the office here and, uh, yeah, play it as and when I, fa- I fancy it. Awesome. I think I've got mine in my, my wardrobe still somewhere. I've got my 360 case on my shelf. Uh, yeah, a great console. A yeah, great awesome. console, man. Great console. You converted me to Xbox. I was a poor Sony guy. And then 360 mm-hmm. came along. Bought me back into like the console gaming because I was stuck playing <laughs> Final Fantasy XI for most of my life, most of my uh, late teens, early twenties. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, great console, I love it. Yeah, super console. So I picked it up. It's fairly cheap, and obviously games are like dirt cheap. So yeah, yeah. I'm excited to, uh, to to play a few bits on my little monitor that I've got set up here in the office. Awesome. <laughs> so good times. Anyway, um, go check out all the Team Games and Grab Studios content across the multiple channels that are going on. Finn's got his own the, at the Finn steel. He's going to put out some cool videos. Steve's got an added time channel. Go check that out. And obviously pumping the podcast out weekly and it's consistently very good. Go follow him on all the social medias as well. He's very good at that. Uh, and go follow me. I, to be honest, all my stuff now is uh, on the games and graps, either podcast feed or YouTube, because quite frankly, I can't be asked maintaining two. <laughs> That's fair. I'd got, rather just ga- have all my stuff on the uh, on the Games and Graps channel. That's fair. It's a Games and Graps multiverse. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Th- we, we've just got stuff everywhere. We're killing it. Yeah, it's good stuff. We told you we were going to this year. Yeah, we told you. We told you. Told you there was going to be no fucking around, and here we are. <laughs> no you're, fucking around. You're welcome, Internet. Yeah, you are. You're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we deserve a round of applause for ourselves. I think we do. Yeah. It's, uh, the yeah, crowd's still there. Do. Yes, they are. Here we go. Thank you, thank you. Just soaking in that adulation. <laughs> <laughs> What's the T-shirt you got on? Uh, this is a Brock Lesnar T-shirt. I bought a little while ago. Uh, it's like an evolution thing, and then it goes oh, okay. all the way to Brock Lesnar. If you see it, it might go that way. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it's an official collection. WWE shirt? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Yes, yeah, pretty cool. I like this German suplex and the, the dude at the end. Yeah. Love it. So, Finn. Hello. What have you been playing? Oh, boy. What indeed. So, I don't know if you heard. There's a little device that came out uh, called the PSVR 2. Ooh. Uh, bought that. Nice, uh, damn nice dent in my bank account, but that's okay. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> um, a whole bunch of uh, VR games. Um, but of course, our favorite game, the Kayak Better Than Life VR uh, Mirage which game. by the way <laughs> is always its real name oh yeah absolutely regardless yeah. of you know what anyone else says that's its name <laughs> better than we, we made it so yeah we made it official on this podcast we did <laughs> uh, that's... So firstly before we get to the games mm. what's it like what's the VR unit itself like in comparison to the original PlayStation VR uh, yeah it's really good it's very similar shape the way it goes on the head is you know, very similar. Back on the head, tighten it around the back. Mm-hmm. Um, bring the thoughts back on your head, on your face. Uh, you've got a little dial on the side, which makes it into focus. It like, brings the lenses uh, like closer or further apart, depending on your okay. eyes, <laughs> basically. Uh, so you put that to make it less blurry. Um, the image quality is super, super sharp. Uh, it's a 4K per eye, you know, HDR, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it looks amazing. Like, this, yeah, it's a huge, huge step up from uh, uh, PSVR one. Uh, controllers are really cool. It's one controller each, obviously each hand. Both got analog sticks on it. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to the move controllers, it had none. Um, it's so weird. What I find so weird about the, the the original PlayStation VR is the controller situation because obviously the PlayStation Move controllers were built for PlayStation Move. Yeah, PS3. In my opinion, the nav controller from the PlayStation Move would have actually been better. Yeah, with a little analog stick on it. I was, yeah, I was it would have, been, that. would have been way, would have made way more sense. Yeah, because you could have just used two of them, and it you, I think you would have had a, a better sense of freedom. Uh, because I think a lot of the time with the PlayStation Move wand, the the light was a real issue. Yeah, like if you turn around, then you just it's gone. We've put it back. Yeah. Another thing is like if you're trying to aim a gun, like two-handed, if you put one controller in front of the other one, then it goes nuts and doesn't know what to do. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's motion sickness overload because of it. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you stand in front of a mirror, because my 
The only space I've got is like in front of my wardrobe with a big mirror on it. Mm-hmm. You can't put a camera in front of the mirror because it thinks there's two of you. That's <laughs> why <laughs> 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 so I, I move my, my move stick and it suddenly goes off in that direction. I start trying to figure out why does it keep doing that? And I was like, oh, mirror. So every time I wanted to play it, I had to put a towel over my mirror just so I can play it properly. <laughs> Technology, you know? <laughs> yeah. But now, it works perfectly. But the, um, the controllers look super nice. I mean, yeah. I yeah, obviously yeah, I have a Quest 2 and the controllers are great on that. But the uh, the, the the PSVR 2, I mean, they, they look great. There's, they're very similar in sort of... I think it's because the colour scheme is very similar to that of the Quest. Yeah. Uh, but but they look very comfortable. I mean, how yeah. are they to, to hold? Yeah, great. It feels really nice. You've got the uh, R1 and L1 buttons on the side there. The mm-hmm. Triggers. You've got a square and circle on this one. You've got X and... Uh, that's uh, sorry, square yeah. and triangle this one, X and circle and the other. Um, mm-hmm. And like six feel nice. Uh, you've got like some basic like you can like points and it points in the game, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh, and yeah, just feels super comfy, super nice. It's got a haptic feedback and stuff. Uh, the headset's yeah, gone awesome. in, headset's gone in as well. So it like vibrates for certain things. So playing GT Seven, you crash into a wall, you got a headset will vibrate. Uh, <laughs> stuff How like is that. it? I mean, that's that that is crazy to me. The <laughs> haptics thing in the headset. I mean, that yeah. must be nuts. Yeah, when the first happened, I was like, what was that? <laughs> but it, yeah, yeah. it feels, it just feel a bit weird at first, but once I got used to it, it was like, this, this is cool. It has a more, it's more, that was more um, immersive. Yeah, I could say it must give you sort of a, a more of a, a sense of immersion than obviously nothing happening at all. Yeah. Also, the eye tracking is really cool. It feels like mind control. It's like, look at like in the horizon, you control the menus by looking at the things. It's like, look at the, look at the thing and it knows what you're looking and then it's, it's it's wild it's like how does it know does, it's crazy does it have hand tracking or is it all controllers uh, it's always the controllers okay but yeah it's, it's, you know, it works like any other VR basically yeah I'm not sure if that if, if the cause I, I know meta obviously the quest is you can control it all just by your hands yeah um, which is literally like fucking tomorrow's world it's crazy <laughs> but um, I didn't know if that was something that they patented and that's the technology that they've they own currently. I'm not sure. But yeah, not sure. I, li- but, I, uh, I know the I know the VR t- the PSVR two's got uh, pass through, isn't it? So oh yeah, you can see the outside world. It's got some cameras on the front, so you can see. Yeah, it. yeah, it's really good. It's, yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah, worth the price. Absolutely, yeah. It's like if you got a PS five anyway, uh, then yeah, it's absolutely worth the price. And the wire. I'm not gonna lie, you, you do notice the wire sometimes. You can uh, okay. sort of feel it hanging there. Uh, that'd be probably the only downside would be that uh, but yeah. after, after a while like, you just get used to it and it's you know not a big deal at all well and let's be fair here as well with regards to that wire Com- in comparison to the original PlayStation VR <laughs> okay. which had 4,000 wires and two separate boxes that you had to fucking plug stuff into <laughs> yeah. one wire re- I mean it just goes into the front of the PlayStation right yeah USB-C let's just, yeah let's just plug it in Boom. yeah you're good yeah, but yeah, I remember I took apart my my pages in VR so I can get rid of it. Original one, Jesus Christ, it's such a nightmare. It's a, such a <laughs> mess of cables and stuff. It's yeah, like, it's going ugh, mental. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, one, I, I can see why the wire's there because if it was a standalone unit, it would be very expensive. I mean, the Quest is expensive on its own, uh, and obviously you don't need a console for it because it, it's standalone VR. It's built for a purpose. Yeah, but obviously with the the level of uh, tech with the screens, 4K HDR screens and the eye tracking and all that sort of stuff. I mean, you'd be looking at stupid amounts of money. I mean, it's expensive anyway, but you'd be looking at uh, you'd be looking at an extra 300 quid easily on top. Yeah, easily. People say like, oh, you have to buy up the, the PS5 as well, which is this much more. But like, if you've got a PC, a VR, you'd also need a massive PC, which would be more expensive. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, it's whatever. It's weird. It's one of those things. But uh, yeah, but no, for me, it's absolutely worth it. Um, yeah, the image is amazing. Like the horizon just looks incredible. Like when you got when you see someone standing in front of like Aloy or something, like Aloy's right there in front of you. It's like, oh my goodness, it's so cool. Yeah. It's like it's really there. Like you, like it's hard to describe. It's like you know, it's like feeling like no, I get it. The feeling in your body is like someone standing in front of me. Like it actually feels like someone's my real person is in front of you. It's, well, it's like I, I remember it's when I played Batman Arkham VR for the first time, and his parents just just your little Bruce Wayne, and you're looking up, and his parents there, and they're massive, and you're like, holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah. But it, it's cool to see, like, uh, the characters that you you know and love from other games, like from games that you play <laughs> on TV, just being there in front of you. And I, I think that's where PlayStation has to do it right this time. Like, utilize them licenses, dude, you know? 
Yeah, absolutely. Give us some sort of God of War spin-off where you've got a massive Kratos stood in front of you. How cool would that be? <laughs> That'd be very cool. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> how, um, how's the motion sickness? Because I've read a lot of people sort of say that because of the, the level of quality in the lenses and the screen, that it's, it's almost non-existent, especially on stuff that you would think would be like Gran Turismo. Yeah, no, I've not really experienced any. Um, the only thing you've, I've felt was the bit of vertigo when I'm, if I'm playing with my eyes and I look down. But that's normal because like, mm-hmm. if it's real life, of course. I was hanging off a cliff, I'd probably get vertigo then as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely you would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not really any motion sickness at all. Yeah, you, uh, Gran Turismo, none at all. It's been which is probably the, probably one of the most impressive ones to be Gran Turismo, like yeah. being in an actual car. All the cars are like super detailed, like even on the inside, like it looks like uh-huh. the actual car. And it's like, well, yes, I mean, it's literally the full Gran Turismo game apart from split screen, which would be impossible anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that's incredible. Just being able to look look beside and see the cars you're driving past. It's like literally, it's literally like real life. It's, quite, it's insane. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Uh, I'm really, I'm really pleased that it, I knew it would be good. Yeah, but I'm really pleased that it is good. It's yeah. Phenomenal. Couldn't be happy with it. Because it is a lot of money at the end of the day. You yeah. know, and it's 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 gonna attack attract uh, you know, f- at least for now, a quite a niche audience. Yeah. Yeah, it's not I mean, it hasn't reached that peak, you know, uh mainstream uh audience yet. yet. I think I think it will eventually. I think it will. I mean, I'm a time, huge but... advocate for VR gaming anyway, as you yeah. know, as I've said many times on this podcast, on the Clubhouse podcast, uh, you know, on Twi- and Twitter and everything. I'm a huge, huge fan of VR gaming and have been since the PlayStation VR 1. Yeah. Um, obviously, with me having a, a Quest 2, and it it still blows my mind now. Like, there's just been a visual upgrade patch for the Quest 2. Nice. And, like, you, you know, so you, you see these... Yeah, and it's you know, in part thanks to the PlayStation VR too, because you know those some of the games that are on the Quest are coming to the PlayStation VR too, so they're visually upgrading the games. And Walkabout Mini Golf has had a visual upgrade, nice. and it's unbelievably beautiful anyway, and it looks even better now. And it's just like it's it's absolutely mind blowing. I remember when the PSVR one came out, and people were like, "Oh, this won't last long. It'd be a, a fad, and it won't you know won't be a thing." But it's only getting better and better, and it's only gonna get better and better, you know. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of it, and I'm I'm glad to see that it is good, and I knew it would be, but uh, I'm really happy. So tell me what games you've been playing on it. Oh yeah, it's incredible. Uh, so yeah, I think the first game I played was the kayak game, just because for the memes. I don't know. <laughs> <It's> actually... <laughs> <laughs> you, you wanted to see what better than life looked like. Exactly. Yeah. But it's actually surprisingly really, really good and fun. Um, so there's different game modes. It's just like the regular exploring mode. We're just going around different areas. Just in my own view, basically. Um, it looks it, awesome. Yeah. It looks so beautiful. It's like crazy beautiful. Yeah, it's probably the best looking game on there so far. That and Horizon. Um, yeah, it just looks real. <laughs> it really does. And there's little yeah. quests you can do, um, which have trophies tied to them, which are like basically rescuing uh, inflatable animals, which is very cute. And the physics on it as well. Like It actually feels like an actual... Like kayak, what do they call the things? Rowing or things? <laughs> An oar, exactly. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> uh, cause I was trying to like go underneath it, trying to lift it up. It's like this is just like I would do in real life if I, was, if I had an oar in my hand, you know. <laughs> I was like pushing myself yeah. off rocks to move my kayak, just like. But the game didn't tell me to do that. I just kind of did it, like mm. at, instinct, like, instinct, exactly, and uh, it works. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that, and it worked. Um, that's awesome I mean the haptics in the controllers must help this also right yeah yeah big time it feels yeah incredible um, also there's also race modes and stuff like that uh, so how's yeah. the platinum so you know VR games tend to have good uh, easy completions uh, it's a bit hard because races are hard to win and there is a trophy for getting a gold medal in a specifically hard race so that might take some doing um, I'll still try I'll still attempt it you'll do it uh, I'll do it I'll find a way <laughs> Um, that's that uh, also Horizon obviously which has been fantastic so far it's yeah just, uh, it looks great I mean obviously uh, there's been videos and stuff posted in Discord and whatnot, but it looks phenomenal yeah incredible um, the bow feels good using the bow just feels natural mm-hmm. um, climbing feels great it's yeah it's top tier is it just bow combat or is it is there sort of like any physical combat as well um, the, I haven't played I haven't gotten super far so far it's just been bows you can like dodge around okay. with like the sticks and stuff 
Basically, basically, mm-hmm. when you encounter an enemy, it locks you into like a, a strafing mode, so you can strafe around the target. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, it works really well. Um, you get different kind of arrows, like fire arrows, ice arrows, and stuff like that. Sure, yeah. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, playing a game called The Light Brigade, which is a very fun, sure, um, yeah, roguelike shooter. Very difficult, uh, but really, really fun once once you get into it. Um, very immersive as well, because when you there's no crouch button, for example. So if you want to take cover, you actually have to crouch. <laughs> behind yeah. cover and so I was just literally there crouching on my floor as I flew, uh, flew past my head <laughs> I, was just, I was imagining someone but that, 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 that's why virtual reality is so awesome I know it, it feels so cool I just imagine someone walking into me like what are you doing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it looks mental you know it, it's um, like I think you know K must look at me mental when I'm playing like especially when I first got it and I was playing a lot of uh, mini golf yeah. just like complaining at my own shit shots <laughs> yeah like, what are you doing you know you're just standing around you just you literally don't have a golf club in your hand you have <laughs> a controller just... and you just look like a lunatic but it's that level of immersion where the game gets you to be physical yeah that, that's what you want from virtual reality i think yeah absolutely i was just literally just poking my head around with my gun you're like huh? pitting up boss shots <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool i love it um it's so that's that. Oh, also, shout out to the little headphones that come with the VR. They're really good, really good quality. I was, yeah. wasn't expecting much because normally you buy, you get like packing headphones for like technology like phones or whatever. That kind of whatever. Mm. But they're really good. They sound just as good as like regular headphones. So yeah, that's they're, good. Because I remember the uh, the ones that came with the first PlayStation VR weren't that great. Yeah, but it's literally like this color quality. My regular headphones. I'm a, I'm nice. That's and, they, good. and they're cool. They got like they plug in and they wrap around your. The, the side of your headset so they have a wire hanging down which is very cool you, so I know I've seen when I've seen people using it like on videos and stuff they're using the Pulse headset mm. I'm assuming you can connect it wirelessly still through your PS5 and use it wirelessly uh, yeah, head, yeah you can use normal headphones if you want to with the headset yeah yeah. but the thing is these big headphones with cups don't go over them unfortunately because they're too like, too big and they're, they hit yeah. against the uh, head strap which is a shame um, if you've got just a regular Pulse earphones, which best against your ears, they're fine. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy using the back end ones because they sound really, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Um, Does it have a microphone on it? The headset? Yeah, it has a microphone on it. That works. That's good. Good quality as well. Did the couple yeah. of streams. So obviously, because obviously you've heard the Quest one. Is it as good as that? Um, I I I saw your stream. So yeah. maybe not quite as good you, as the Quest, but it's still it's still much better than I don't know this <laughs> basically uh, uh, yeah. it's, it's all good quality you can still hear you know very clearly yeah. um what else uh other sports uh synth riders which is a uh, music Ooh. rhythm game similar to beat saber um okay it's very cool basically you've got balls flying in your face nice nice um <laughs> basically you've got to hit the balls as they come towards you um just uh, dancing around in the living room is that made cool. for fitness? I know it's, uh, I've seen the game, but is it like a fitness thing or is um, it just a game? It's just it's basically just a rhythm game, but you can also, you know, can help you. You're moving about, so it's going to oh, help yeah. you get through it anyway. Most like Beat Saber. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. Just a, it's really fun. The music's, good. <clears throat> the music's good, the graphics are good, it plays well. It's just, it's just a fun game. A fun music, music game. Um, oh, I love rhythm games, dude. Yeah, I love rhythm games. So, so good. And um, I think that's about it. I'm sure there's more. Um, but I've pre-ordered the um, Switchback game. I assumed that was coming okay. out day, day one, so that was why I pre-ordered it. But no, that's this month. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, that's the uh, that's the Until Dawn one, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, like, well, super massive. I know it's not connected to Until Dawn. The Dark Pictures Anthology, what it's called. Um, sure, yeah. So that's that. I look forward to that, and that's probably about it, really, for VR stuff. Um, Resident Evil 8 I haven't really gone to yet but I did play it briefly how is it? good yeah is that usually the controls exactly what you expected it to be? pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah okay um, I use those controls like every first person shooter does where you reach behind your back to get one gun reach down here to yeah. get another gun look at your wrist do this <laughs> stuff like that um, sure yeah which works fine um, that's about it I think for VR stuff um, played some uh, theatre rhythm Final Fantasy which is another rhythm game with the Final yeah, which is really good. I played the demo for it on Switch. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I liked it. It was good. Yeah, really good game. Great music. Um, Simple as well. Yeah, like, I, just it's not it just doesn't overly complicate things. Exactly. Which is good. Exactly. Yeah, some of the quests are quite hard because you have to defeat certain bosses and enemies in a certain way. But if you just hear from the music, it doesn't matter. 
like all yeah. that stuff's like secondary. Um, so that's been cool. Um, I don't really have like a main focused game I'm playing right now. I'm kind of bouncing between VR and like theatre with them. So I've not mm. really got like a big main focus right now. I'm, okay, that's good. I'm kind of in between big games, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying VR a lot. I've been playing that pretty much good. every day. That makes me happy. I'm so happy that you guys, obviously that we we all speak to on a regular basis, who've got it, are enjoying it. Um, mm. I was super excited for you guys anyway, because like I said before, I'm a huge advocate for the for the genre yeah um for the for the for the medium but it's it's yeah it's very very cool and i knew it would be cool it's great to see that uh it's going to be uh cross play compatible mm. so when walkabout mini golf comes out on playstation vr we'll be able to play against one another like yeah. me on quest you on playstation vr and i think that fucking rules man that's, that's the way to go you know that is absolutely the way to go because you know these games they don't have masses they're not massive player bases not like you know Fortnite or whatever you know because not everybody has a a vr headset so the fact that they are uh, enabling cross play for all these games is is a good thing yeah i think synth wireless has a cross play as well oh nice okay there's a new room (laughs) the night with the like a big group of people i had the most the most american sounding woman of all time in there nice <laughs> but yeah, like an, like an older older person she's just talking about like oh my son got me into this this and that and i didn't understand it blah 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 just talking talking talk um yeah, a very strong uh <laughs> american accent it's quite, it's quite funny nice yeah but yeah it's, it's really cool so i'm really excited for like when more games like after the fall i know is cross play oh, yeah. um that's good actually mini mini golf is going to be cross play i can't wait I, i'm honestly i'm excited to actually for you to get that so that we can play together yeah me too because uh, i've wanted to play it with somebody for for age i was just playing my own just yeah. doing a round of golf but uh when i'll be able to play against somebody I, i'm super excited for that so yeah yeah can't wait love, love to mini golf it's a fun time yeah and you'll be blown away by it oh yeah i'm sure what, what you'll see it on... straight away and you'll be like whoa okay yeah from what i've seen from your video it looks really fun so yeah look forward to jumping into that yes definitely cool so how about yourself? What have you been playing? Uh, still playing Hogwarts. Nice. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Really, really enjoying it. Um, cool. Probably 24 hours in at this point. Very nice. Uh, still very much enjoying it. It's... I, I think it's... I, I, You know, I don't mean to sort of blow smoke up it, but I do genuinely think it's one of my favourite games ever. Nice. Wow. Big praise. Just, just because it's... It's just so much fun. There's so much stuff to do. The combat's great. The the quests are great. The the graphics are stunning. It's just really, really good. It's everything that I wanted it to be. That's good. Um, but so yeah, it's it's just so good, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, nice. So there's that. I've been playing Gran Turismo Seven. Very good. Very cool. Uh, very much enjoying it. I think I'm on the last menu on the cafe thing. Wow. Okay. And then I think what it will do then is the game will just want me to go and complete all the cups or whatever. Yeah. I've, um, I've been doing the licenses on Graduate 7. And I'm trying okay. to get to all those because I know there's a trophy for them. Getting more than gold. So I'm going to try and get this stuff out of the way first. So if I can do this, then I might go for platinum. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It involves, it involves a lot of online crap. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the only unfortunate thing, but... Right, yeah. do 500 races in sport mode or something. And you're like, oh, yeah. fucking hell. <laughs> really? That's a bit much. You know? Yeah. It's a fun game, though. I don't even want to do five. <laughs> yeah, don't I haven't don't... even done one, and there's one for a trophy. I just need to just do a race. Yeah. Don't make me play with other people. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> As I've sat here and been like, I really can't wait to play mini golf with you. And then <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do fucking online races. <laughs> yeah, people you the don't know. The difference is, yeah, the difference is, People will be really good at it. Yeah, knows that as well. And I am not really good at it. <laughs> the sitting in the back, I'm just people laugh here. Yeah, basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Skidding all around the gravel and stuff. <laughs> God damn it! But yeah, I'm really enjoying that at the minute. It's so good. Cool. It's just, it's just so good. I don't know what it is with Gran Turismo. I mean, I, I love Forza, I really do. But there's something about Gran Turismo that just feels. Firstly, it's a fucking sensory overload. Like, if you play with your headphones in, like, and I'm certain they've done it on purpose, <laughs> it's very pleasing on the ears. Like, yeah, just true. the different noises that the menus make. Um, like, everything has a different sound. 
and the music's great and it's just you know the cars sound fantastic and everything just it's just a very well put together experience gran turismo mm. uh, this is the best gran turismo in years it's probably the best one since uh gran turismo 3 on from the ps2 yeah yeah i'd agree with that um, just uh I only played many. I know I played one a while ago. I think it's on PS3, which I just couldn't get into at all. Uh, but this yeah. one I'm actually really enjoying, so I might play this more. Yeah, it's it's really really good. There's a lot to do. Uh, you know, they've, they've got the the daily miles thing, which oh, you yeah. know makes you want to go on and play it. And there's the car collector level and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the game, as well as a gazillion races to do, and they're adding content all the time. So yeah, it's really really good, and it's just. It's just a really great PlayStation exclusive. I mean, there's so many anyway. Yeah. But it really is just a, a fantastic PlayStation exclusive. Awesome. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah. So I've been, I've been playing that. I've been playing a lot of PlayStation, basically, at the minute. Um, nice. But uh, since, you know, over the last couple of days, while I've been sort of uh, not at home, I've been uh, playing on my PlayStation Vita. Oh, okay. So I've modded my playstation vita that's illegal yeah come out come out <laughs> come at me so sony you don't give two shits about the vita no, don't true. even you, send your assassins i don't care <laughs> uh but i've actually been playing playstation one games on it because it's such a great way to do that mm, it's a nice little uh, emulator machine it really is yeah so i've been playing a uh, i've actually been playing iss pro evolution soccer the nice. first one from the ps1 and i've been super like addicted to it these last couple of days um, it's going to be this long to get good at it as well because it's been a long time since I played it. Got to be like twenty years. Wow! So um, I'm here. I'm here getting good at it again. Cool. But, awesome. Yeah, I've been. I played some PSP games as well. I actually played the 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 TNA Impact for um, PSP version that I never played before. Oh, didn't didn't even know there was one. <laughs> That's good. Cool. Yeah, neither did I. So um, I played that and it's actually really good. Nice. Um, so yeah. I've just I've been playing that a little bit as well, but mainly my main focus at the minute has been um, Hogwarts Legacy and Gran Turismo Seven, and I'm the stuff coming out this month that I'm really excited for. So I'm trying to get Hogwarts done, and yes. once I've done finished like the main cafe campaign of Gran Turismo Seven, um, you know, then I, it's sort of a game I can dip in and out of and just do the rate, do the tournaments and stuff casually and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. I'm having a blast though, I'm having a real blast. Awesome. Good. Gaming fucking rules. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. So, yeah. Um, I mean, this is a busy month for games. It is. Let's indeed. get into it, man. Let's get into it. Let's get into the games of March. Remember when we used to have a little, a little like, music for this? Uh, yeah. I do. Isn't it the... Um... And it was so funny as well, the music. <laughs> I remember the first time that you played it. <laughs> I was from uh, uh, Daily Premonition, yeah. <laughs> um, do I still have that on here? Don't think I do. No. How did we never get flagged up for that as well? By the way, I think we did. I think it came. Oh, did we? <laughs> right. Okay. At least one of them. Was, I noticed it was on there. I was like, okay, fair enough. They were like, "What are these motherfuckers doing?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't find it. Oh well. Next time. Doesn't matter. It's all good. Yeah. Next time. Right. Let's have a look what we got. Uh, okay. Busy month. Busy month. We've got a game called uh, Melon Journey, Bittersweet Memories, coming out on PC. Uh, let's see what that is. What is that? Come on. <laughs> Melon Journey. Uh, it's a story. Oh, I can't wait for Melon Journey. It looks a lot like a Game Boy game. Uh, it's a story explo exploration game about revisiting a town full of adorable animals with eccentric personalities. Yet under its cute, nostalgic surface, surface is a dark tale of crime and corruption. Ooh. <laughs> Wow. Okay, that took a turn. Yeah, it's like a, it's, it's like green and white, like a game Game Boy colors. Okay, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. PC on you though. And oh, on Steam it says the release date is sixth of April. So good start. Good start. <laughs> Literally a month away. Thanks, Game Radar. <laughs> <laughs> it says March seventh on here, but they got it a month a month early, I guess. Mm. Oh well. Um, what else we got? <laughs> what else? Indeed, We've got a game called Relic Space. Uh, uh, experience a deeply simulated hex-based space combat as an elite starship pilot. Explore a ruined solar system, upgrade your ship, and lead your faction to greatness in this tactical space RPG with 4X elements. I don't know For what nerds. For nerds. I don't know what 4X means. 
I'm sure it's cool. Space nerds. Space you know? nerds. <laughs> Pretty much. Cool. So if you've got a space nerd, that's something for you. Yeah. Uh, we have a stu- and they're definitely insulted by us calling them space nerds <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. Sorry, 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 space nerds. Yeah, um, sorry, space nerds. Don't be space nerds. <laughs> then you won't get called it. <laughs> we have a, we have a uh, greatly titled one of those names which we love. Oh. Uh, Paranormosite. The seven, <laughs> <laughs> the seven oh, mysteries no. of Honjo. <laughs> no, wait, is, uh, say that again. Uh, para- Paranormosite. The seven mysteries of Honjo. Oh, come yes. on. Uh, is it a visual novel? Uh, it is actually, funny enough. Oh, <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a quite a high budget one. It's made by Square Enix. Uh, it's uh, like a. Doesn't mean it's going to be good. We, we know this. It's, it's true. It's at true. this point. Um, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's like a mystery uh, visual novel kind of kind of game. Puzzles and whatnot. Look, it's, it's kind of fun. It's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a look. It's like a me game. I'll, of course it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it on a wish list for if it goes sale. <laughs> and then never buy it let's see how it goes <laughs> terrible name terrible yeah. terrible name Paranormosite Paranormosite yes it's just rhythm. making words up yeah it's like the theatre rhythm it's like yeah it's making make stuff up yeah just call it Final Fantasy Music Game <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> uh, right we got you've uh, already sold it just by calling it that yeah I'd buy it Exactly. Final <laughs> Fantasy music game. Oh, that sounds good because I like Final Fantasy and also I like rhythm games. Cool. Perfect. You're right up my alley. Right. Uh, got, uh, Project Zero Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, which is a port of a Wii game which originally came out in Japan only. Uh, Project mm. Zero is a game series that existed since the PS2. Very cool horror game. Okay. It's about ghosts and taking pictures of ghosts and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I've heard of this. I yeah. have heard of it, yeah. It's very cool. It's fun. Um, I've got and uh, back to a remaster came out from the which is originally a Wii U game came out on PS4 recently. Mm. Uh, Let me tell you a game that I never played. Actually, speaking of like supernatural stuff, was it uh, oh, yeah. Fear? Fear, Fear is really good. Really, really never good. played them, but now that I've bought this 360, I might actually seek these games out because I think they're all from that sort of generation, aren't they? Yeah. Do I have it still? Um, I don't. I've got, it, I've I got a PC. Is there three of them? Um, yes. First one's the best one. Second's decent. Third, yeah. third's where they added co- okay. forcing co-op as every game did back then, yeah. um, and just wasn't as good. But one, one's good. One's excellent. Two's pretty good. Three's no. Three skip skip three. Play the other two. Okay, skip three. Yeah. Sort of like Dead Space. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but no, really, really good. Highly recommend playing that. Okay. Big time. Um, yeah. So that's that. Very cool. Um, what else have we got? Ooh, Train Life, a railway simulator for Switch. Oh my Jesus. God. There's so many games like this now. It's That's, crazy. Why you look thing? at like the PlayStation Store. Oh, by the way, that Extreme Wrestling game, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> there's, there's somebody at Sony that needs to answer for these tragedies being allowed on the store. Yeah, that was insane. Like The, the, the fact that it's barely, the animations didn't, just didn't work and it was barely even functional. Yeah, the, the, fact- the first move was me trying a suplex, <laughs> but my guy is stood a good two meters away from the person that I'm suplexing. <laughs> it's mad. Plus the fact that they literally stolen a rock and undertake a model from some other game. Um, but literally, yeah. not any, they didn't remake it. It's literally a model from a different game. Like, yeah, I mean that Undertaker one's crazy. I mean that is SmackDown versus Raw 2008 Undertaker. Yeah, it really 100%. is. 100. Yeah, like how are they getting away with this stuff? Yeah, because it's because nobody knows that it exists. Yeah, well, yeah pretty much. Yeah, uh, did they have trophies? Yeah, but like <laughs> bad ones. Like yeah. it was win one match. In fact, I think there's 15 trophies, not a platinum trophy. Yeah, of course. So it's not even worth wasting your time trying to do it. Yeah, uh, I thought Five Star Wrestling was the worst PlayStation wrestling game. <laughs> yeah, this is the worst wrestling game, full stop ever. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Not gonna lie. Yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, head over to our YouTube. There's a video there. Yeah, it's bad. It's very, very bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yet another train simulator. I don't know why there's so many. Obviously, there's oh, yeah, a... that's where I was going with this. Oh yeah. So, like, when you like, go onto the PlayStation Store, like, if there's any sort of pl- store on the PlayStation, like any sort of state uh, sale on, you scroll down the list. There feels like there's a gazillion train DLCs for various train sim games. Yeah. 
It's like, it's so weird. It's clearly there's an audience for it, and fair enough, if that's your thing. Cool. Um, but I, just, I don't get it. But just bring one game out. <laughs> yeah, you'd think. And update that one game, because they've all got the same shit graphics. Like, every <laughs> single one of them has the same graphics. Yeah. It's like Farming Simulator. Why do you need to bring one out every year? <laughs> or the only thing that changes is the season four times a year. Just do that. Have one game and just update it. Yeah, why not? You don't need to, you don't need to train life 2023. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Too many. I don't think there's oh, yeah. like 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 a police autobahn simulator or something. Something really yep. specific. Like <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> yeah why not fire engine simulator 23 yeah what why <laughs> mental right what else we got uh a game called before your eyes coming to psvr 2 which is a highly rated okay. game that's on other uh vr systems like on steam so it's got... is it is it on other ones then is it because i thought this was a playstation vr 2 specific one because of the eyes thing uh, no, it's on. I think it's on Steam VR at least. I think probably. Um, what else we got? Let me have a look. What's it called? Uh, Before, Before your, your eyes. eyes. Yeah, it's definitely on Steam. It's, uh, I'm looking at the Steam store. It's got uh, overwhelmingly positive reviews, so uh, pretty good then. Before your, I don't think it's on Quest. I don't think it is anyway. I'm just looking now. No, it's not. Oh, it's a shame. Um, it says, embark on an emotional first-person narrative adventure where you control the story and affect its outcomes with your real life with your real life blinks. Oh. With this, in a... yeah, that's why I thought it was a PlayStation-specific one. Yeah, I think um, I think Steam VR must have a eye tracking thing as well, or some like oh, okay. expensive ones. Yeah, uh, yeah. With this innovative technique, you will fully immerse yourself in a world of memories, uh, both joyous and heartbreaking, as your whole life flashes before your eyes. It looks really good. Very artsy. Yeah, looks nice. Very. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. Awesome. Um, what else we got? Rough Justice 84 <laughs> on PC. Sounds uh, <laughs> fun? Question mark? Sure. I mean, it sounds like a... So Rough Justice, specifically 84 as well. So obviously, <laughs> it's got to be a beat-em-up, like a side-scrolling beat-em-up or some shit, set in 1984. Um, let's have a look. Uh, do what it takes to make your fledgling security agency thrive in this 80s noir crime busting dirty crossing vengeance seeking earth? board game inspired strategy game with dice and cards uh, Jesus yeah. what commas use commas <laughs> <laughs> just breathe you know yeah. I mean, that's crazy it's, it's a so basically, game, basically you run a detective agency and you've got to so it's a detective agency simulator 1984 basically it's basically a, okay. a strategy game Power Dexter Detective Angie, I guess. Wow. Okay. <laughs> sure. Good name. Weird game. Um, yeah. We the the game doesn't quite match the name. No, <laughs> it doesn't. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, we have the Legend of Heroes Trial Trails to Azure. Good subtitle. Which is a port of an <laughs> older game. It's set in the Trials, the Legend of Heroes game series, which is a massive JRPG series. Um. It's a me game. I haven't played the Tales Legend of Heroes game. They look fun. I'm sure it's good. Okay. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, the Forest Cathedral on PC and Xbox. No PS4. Mm, or 5. The Forest Cathedral. Yeah. Cathedral. Is it Xbox exclusive? Holy shit. Uh, so it's a first person. Uh, that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I know it. It's a first person environmental thriller set on a remote island playing as sign. A scientist, Rachel Carson, players will slowly uncover the effects of DDT. Oh my goodness! Uh, by using advanced environmental technology <laughs> to solve to solve two D slash three D connected puzzles in this dramatic reimagining of Silent Spring. Sure. It's a puzzle so game. they're basically <laughs> searching for Jake the Snake Roberts in the forest. <laughs> Seems like it. Looks sort of okay. like uh, sort of like Mist or something. A puzzle game. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Looks decent. Um. What else? Oh, we've got Switchback VR coming out on the 16th. It's the, the dark pictures, uh, you know, until dawn thing. Yeah. Um, Hopefully it won't have douchebaggy characters like the dark <laughs> a pictures anthology does. Hopefully not. Honestly, I, I played an hour of that first one, uh, Man of Medan. Oh, yeah. I thought, you're supposed to want to save these people. I want them all to die now because they're <laughs> fucking assholes. Uh, yeah. I watched someone else play it and was like, yeah, I'd, 
and they were taking the piss out of it and yeah <laughs> yeah like i i love until dawn and i like the quarry but the those games i'm just like i don't understand like you're supposed to want to save these characters but they're just acting like dickheads straight away <laughs> and you're like you know what fuck these people <laughs> i don't care if they die or what i want you all to die <laughs> yeah yeah straight, straight game down. over in five minutes <laughs> hooray <laughs> uh, look, we've got uh, Bayonetta Origins coming out on Switch on the 17th hmm. with the subtitle of Cereza and the Lost Demon oh. why? <laughs> Bayonetta Origins is fine yeah <laughs> it's cool it's got like a little demo in Bayonetta 3 which is pretty fun what, like what a, kind of game is it? like a top down sort of uh, puzzle sort of like, a, sort of like Zelda-ish but mostly puzzle focused okay yeah it's fun it's nice that, that that'll be. Is it made? By, is it Platinum Games that do them games? Uh, yeah, I believe so. And have they done this one or? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's have a look. It's a prequel. Basically, you're playing as Bayonetta as a as a child. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, Platinum Games. Cool. Yeah. That that you know, there's a very good chance that that's going to be pretty decent. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Looks really cool. Hmm. All right. That's that. Uh, oh, one for you, Sonny. One I know you're excited for. Uh, Peppa Pig World Adventures. <laughs> on, yeah, boy. On literally everything. PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One Switch. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no sub, no, no ri- ridiculous subheading. Uh, no, it's just Peppa Pig World Adventure. It's fairly standard. There you go. That that the people who've made that game understand. <laughs> They've uh-huh. listened to this podcast and thought, you know what, this was going to be Peppa Pig. Let's go around the world, climb some mountains, um, <laughs> you know, don't eat bacon or whatever. And <laughs> it's it's now, you know what, world adventure's fine. Yeah. Uh, play in the bigger, wider world of Peppa Pig and bring your whole family into the story. New York City Why? is calling, and so are Paris, London, <laughs> and world tour of the fun places. You and Peppa can make pizza in Italy, walk on Hollywood, Boule- Hollywood Boulevard, and much more. Or don't. Great. Or just don't. I know the, the um, last one is on Xbox Game Pass and has an easy 1,000 gamer score. Oh, does it? Nice. I'll download yeah. that tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we've got, of course, we've got uh, one of the bigger ones, WWE 2K23, coming up next week. Coming up next I'm week. excited for it, man. I'm super excited for it. Me too. I was watching, before we started, watching a uh, video on Up, Up, Down, Down of the new uh, preview of the new GM mode. They've added a lot. So you can do multi-man matches now, uh, triple threat for all ways. Got mid card belts. It's way more. Oh, good. Master okay. types. Um, they had the loads. So look- GM mode looks really, really much, much improved. I like GM mode uh, a lot. So that's that's. Yeah, me too. Awesome. I got a lot of hours out of that. Um, let's go have a look at the DLC because they they released plans for the DLC. Ah, uh, yes. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. <laughs> so this is what is what we're going to get. So they've released the dates for the packs as well. So the first one is on April the 19th. Is indeed. So we get the Steiner brothers, Scott Steiner and Rick Steiner. Awesome. Top dollar. You uh, uh, um Ashanti the Adonis and B-Fab, but in brackets, manager only. So yes. you can't actually be B fab. You can't be B fab. You can just have her. You can't be B fab. You can only have her as a manager. Yeah, I think it's, it's the same thing with Scarlet as well, even though they're both wrestled matches. Um, yeah, but... strange that because obviously Scarlet was uh, only a manager in the last one as well, wasn't she? Yeah, but it's no, it's fine, I guess. At least, at least a minute. Uh, well, yeah, there is, I think they may have made Scarlet a playable character eventually in oh, 2K22. I can't remember. Can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. Uh, May 17th, we've got the Pretty Sweet Pack. I'm oh. guessing they can't call it Too Sweet Pack for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, no, wait. This is why it's called Pretty Sweet. So we've got so oh. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Elton Prince and Kit Wilson, who, of course, are pretty deadly. Yeah, that's why. And <laughs> uh, Tiffany Stratton to round that off. Nice. Cool. Because, of course. Decent, yep. Uh, I think race to that. NXT Pack. <laughs> oh, yep. Which is on June the fourteenth. So we've got uh, popular NXT superstar Harley Race. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Ivy added. Nile, Wendy Chu, my favourite Tony D'Angelo, and Trick Williams. Cool. 
yeah, Harley Race. It obviously didn't have space from anywhere else. So I thought, just, uh, we need some. We need to put them somewhere. Just back them in here. I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, really weird. Um, Revel with Wyatt Pack on July nineteenth. Nice. So we've got Bray Wyatt, Zeus from No Holds Barred. So random. <laughs> so very random. So random. But there, there must be some sort of licensing thing going on here with this because they've just started bringing figures out of Zeus as well. Oh really? Oh right. Yeah. Um, maybe they're making a No Holds Barred sequel. Maybe. <laughs> or 40 years on or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Valhalla, which is Sarah Logan. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, Joe Gacy, which is cool. That's very cool. And Blair Davenport, which is cool as well. Very awesome. The one th- the one thing I've noticed here is that um, whatever they're called now, Zach Gibson and James Drake... Mm. I've never, I've not been in any of these recent games. It's a good point, actually. Yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah, weird... I don't know if it's because they don't want to be. Could you request that? I've no idea. Mm. But they've not been in any of them, and they're obviously a big part of Joe Gacy's faction yeah. these days. The Dyad. Uh, so I don't understand. It's very strange. I like the Dyad. They're, they're not. But uh... they're not in the game, are they? The main game. Maybe I haven't seen. Um... I don't think they are. I've not seen them in there. If, so I imagine if um, um, Dylan won Joe Gacy, I imagine if he's not in it, the other two probably won't be either. Unless they're yeah, in the most strange. young bets, maybe. But Zach Gibson was like a big part of NXT UK, and he's never been in any of the games since NXT UK's been in them. Yeah, let's have a look on him. Let's say, I'll start with Zach Gibson. WWE 2K23? Question mark. Um. No, there's some fan made ones. <laughs> That's about it. Strange. Very, very strange. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Um and then finally the bad news U pack uh cool. on the sixteenth of August. Nice. So we've got uh Eve Torres. Random. Wade Barrett. Nice. Ooh. Damon Kemp. Cool. Uh Andre Chase. Nice. And Nathan Fraser. Cool. I like it. So a lot, lot of NXT scattered around the Nathan, DLC. Nathan Fraser. Bray Wyatt's in there as well. Nice. Sorry, Nathan Fraser, um, William Regal's son, or that's someone else? No, no, that's uh, Charlie Dempsey. Ah, that's the one. Uh, Nathan Fraser was... Um, so he wrestled on AEW one time and then was signed to WWE, and he was in NXT UK for a, a long time, and now he's in actual NXT. Yeah. To, uh, the long, name... Long-haired dude, uh, wrestled recently. I think I think they did um, like a Best of Something series with Axiom. Yeah, now I recognise him, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So the DLC is good, you know, very yeah. standard kind of stuff. Uh, it's cool that Bray Wyatt is going to be in there. I think he was always going to be. Yeah, that's good. Uh, cool that he's been put in there with Joe Gacy. I would, I would actually like to see the two of them paired up on the main roster together. Yeah, that'd be cool. I like Joe Gacy a lot. I like that old fashioned. Cool. Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's a lot of NXT representation in the WWE 2K23 DLC. But I'm really excited for it. it looks great. War Games looks great. Um, my faction this year does have online. So it feels like they've just took what was good about 2K22 and built upon it, which is was obviously the correct thing to do anyway. Oh, yeah. So that's a good thing. They keep yeah, doing, look forward to it. Yeah, if they keep doing that every year. Um, then yeah, it's going to be. It's only going to get better and better, literally. Um, yeah, definitely. But we're going to stream it, aren't we? We're going to stream. We'll stream it on re- the release day of the deluxe edition, so Tuesday next Tuesday. week. Yes, that'd be awesome. Which will be the 14th. So we'll stream that. We'll. Um, yeah, we'll figure out how the how the game works and what you can do in terms of playing each other online, and we'll just stream it and talk yeah. about it, and so we can so you can see what what it's all about. Yeah, it'd be fun. Cool. What else have we got coming out? Uh, we've got the Walking Dead: Sage and Sinners Chapter Two on PSVR Two, and the first game as well coming with it, which is nice. Well, that, is that that's coming out and everything else as well? I think um, probably it's just as PSVR Two here, but I imagine it's coming out to on everything else. Yeah, look. I'm pretty certain I've seen um, it advertised. For, I, mean, I, I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be on Quest, but let me have a look. Uh, Walking Dead. Well, it's on Steam, so I imagine it must be on. Yeah. Uh, Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, Retribution, is that what it's called? Uh, yes, that's the one. Yeah, then it is coming out on Quest. Cool. 
اصلا اون ذا او كروش مارك ام ميبي ام ناس انا ذا از او از ات از نوت ان بي اس في او 2 يا The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution. Yeah. That is it, isn't it? That's it. Then apparently it's out, but yeah. um, it's out on Quest at least. All right, cool. <laughs> Fair play. Um, what else? Ooh, PGA Tour, EA Sports. Nice. Golf. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> the last one The last one they did, I think, was the Rory McIlroy one. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess it's time to school EA Sports PGA Tour, I guess. Basically, I think that, that'll be fine. I think I think that'll be pretty decent. Uh, I have the 2K one. I just haven't really played it. Um, it was just okay. Yeah, cool. It's golf. You hit a ball with a stick. Yeah, yeah it's it's golf. <laughs> cool. And then probably the biggest one of the month: <coughs> uh, Resident Evil 4 remake coming out on yeah next gen consoles only. Oh no, and PS4 Good. and PS4. It says here. Is that right? Oh, uh, I don't know. I feel like it isn't. I feel like it only said PS5 when I looked on the store. Hmm. Um, no, I'm not sure. I hope they've bypassed old consoles. Sorry, PS4 owners or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Either way, I'm so excited for this. I love the Resident Evil remakes anyway. Uh, I think they've all been very good. I would like to see... I know there has been one, but I would like to see a a newer version of the original one. Yeah. I think there is a version on, uh, well, everything. But yeah, I know what you mean, like updated uh, textures. Because that, that's the GameCube that. one, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Game the GameCube one that's on everything. Yeah. So I would like to see um, like an, a, a, a remake of the first one akin to the newer new ones. So like 2, 3, and 4. Yeah. That'd be cool, actually. Do you think we see five and... I mean, surely not, but do you think we see remakes of five and six? I'm guessing no. Um, I don't know. Maybe a port of five, maybe, if there isn't one already. But uh, you, can, you can get it, because it's, it's on <laughs> PS4. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That, that, hmm, that, they might do something with them. I'm not sure. Exactly. Five was okay. Six yeah. is fucking awful. We've we've slagged six off so much on yeah. this podcast. It's not great. Um, so I was looking googling stuff. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what to do with that. Hopefully, we get Code Veronica at some point. Really. Yes, yeah, that'd be really that cool. That seems logical to me. That's that, that was a popular one. It was on everything as well. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I love Code Veronica. I haven't Dreamcast. So good. Yeah, set in Europe. Chris and Claire. Yep, and the other guy, Steve. Steve. Sure. No one cares about Steve. <laughs> Fuck Steve. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, Code Veronica would be be logical, and I would love to see that, actually, to be fair. Yeah, me too. That'd be cool. But I'm, I'm stoked for Resident Evil 4, and it's cool as well, because obviously, um, eventually, you get the VR version of it when that launches. Yeah. Whenever that might be. That's very cool. I've lost my list. Uh... Yeah, so the main reason I bought on PS, I was thinking about buying it on Xbox because I mean, wanted to buy more Xbox games. Then I remembered, yeah. oh, VR, of course. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's got it just makes perfect sense. It does absolutely. Uh, but it, it'll be cool. I mean, I've, I've I have played the original Resident Evil Four in VR, and it's it's awesome. So to be able to play the newer version in VR will be great as well. Yeah, big time. Right, cool. Anything else? Let's have a look. Um, Last of Us Part 1 is coming to, coming to PC. So that's cool. Okay. Uh, Forza Horizon 5 DLC, Rally Adventure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, it adds another gigantic map, for Christ's sake. Wow. As if there's <laughs> not enough on there already. <laughs> yeah, so they're, and they're adding Rally Adventure, and yeah, that's the next big expansion. It looks great, to be fair, nice. as it always does. You know, it's Forza Horizon. It always is great. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to to, to jump into that. But uh, I, you know, I own the expansion pass anyway, so I'll jump into it whenever, not necessarily day one. But um, yeah, I'll play. I'll play it because Forza Horizon. But it looks great, a massive. So yeah, awesome. Uh, also, Seafood is coming to Xbox at some point this month. Doesn't give us oh, a release date, but apparently, yeah, apparently this month is coming out at some point. That's cool. I, I'm expecting Ghostwire Tokyo on Xbox Game Pass soon because oh, yeah. 
exclusivity ends very, very soon for PlayStation because it's mm. been a year almost. Cool. Which, by the way, that's a game that you should check out. I think you'd like that personally, Finn. Yeah. Um, it, it, I really liked it. It was, don't get me wrong, not the greatest game ever made. <laughs> uh, but I really enjoyed it. And I think it's something you would like as well. Great aesthetic, really great looking game, interesting little story. And yeah, it was good. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it looks really fun. It definitely looks like my kind of thing. So yeah, I'll check that out at some point for sure. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it for this month. All the big all the big games, especially uh, Peppa Pig. It's probably the best game coming out this month. For sure, um, Peppa Pig. Yeah. I think second place is probably Resident Evil 4, for sure. Yeah, Resident Evil 4 uh, and WWE 2K23, the big ones for me this month. Yeah, same. Cool. Awesome. I feel like there's big hitters like every month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Good year. It's good year last year. It's been yeah. a good year for many years in a row, I feel like. It's bangers every yeah, year. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I think it is, it is literally banger after banger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about next month? Got anything cool coming out next month? Let's have a look. Um, next month's a bit quieter, it looks like. I'll, we'll go through it um, in April, obviously, but of course, a bit of a bit of a slower month next month. This is okay. good. It gives us gives us time to play what we got, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not the backlog that we've accrued over time. Yeah. <laughs> While we're here buying retro consoles like fucking morons, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, right. So that was games of uh, March. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. It's cool. exciting. I mean, yeah, Resident Evil is going to be great. WWE 2K23, if it's anything like 2K22 and it's improved on that, then that's going to be great as well. Yeah, big time. Look forward to playing that. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, let's talk wrestling. Unless yeah. there's anything else gaming-wise you wanted to to mention. Uh, I think it's about it. I still well, remember something as soon as you stopped recording, but I think that's about it Yeah, now. definitely. That's <laughs> how it always works, isn't it? So yeah. that's good. <laughs> Uh, did you watch uh, AEW? I did. Revolution? I watched most of it. I watched the first couple of matches. I watched the main event. And I watched the middle bit at some point. It was <laughs> awesome, right? Really good. Main event. Yeah, mind-blowingly good. MGF is yeah, so good. It's, oh, God. So good. Like, he's just... I was unsure about him as champion. I mean, I wanted him to be champion. I felt like it was the right thing to do, to put the belt on him. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've not really been that into his title reign. I think it's been okay. Yeah. But I feel like this really cemented him as the top guy in that company. Oh, yeah. In terms of the champion. Yeah, agreed. Um, I mean, Danielson is phenomenal anyway. Oh, yeah. You know, can make anybody look good. But I feel like now, you know, he's just a complete package, MJF. And I think, you know, he's absolutely the right person to carry that company forward. Um. He's, he's, he's not, and the, the scary thing is, he's not the finished article yet. Yeah, he's still going to get better. He's still young. Which is mental. Young. Yeah, insane. But I thought, I thought it was, I thought, you know, top to bottom, I thought the show was very, very good. Easily the best AEW pay per view. In fact, possibly the best AEW pay per view ever. Yeah, I still need to watch the middle matches. In terms of match matches, quality, but, uh, um, very so little amount of bullshit yeah. going on. Yeah, really cool. I mean, like the uh, opening match as well, Christian and Jungle Boy. Um, um, the, the opening match was Ricky Starks and Jericho. Yeah, sorry, like that as well. <laughs> Enjoyed that. I got I got mixed up. Um, but yeah, both matches were great. Um, both I... were very good, and I thought they did the the casket match really well. I thought they did they did something a little different with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it felt like of... a buried alive match, didn't it? Really, more than Pretty anything, much. it's not just a traditional casket match. It was more of a buried alive match. But I thought they did it really well, and I thought they they finished that story perfectly. Yeah, exactly. It all you know came to a satisfying conclusion, and yeah, and now they both can move on. I imagine Christian disappears for a while now, and we'll come back. Yeah, to I don't know, I don't know what his, I don't know what his contract with AEW is like, Christian. I don't know whether it's sort of a, a thing where that's him now done with the company. I don't know if Maybe. he was signed to a multi-year contract. Personally, uh, I would like Christian to be Edge's final match in WWE. That makes sense. Uh, so I would love to see that happen um, down the line. But I think Christian has played this heel role phenomenally in yeah. AEW. I think he's been absolutely brilliant. 
and what he's done also is is help elevate Jungle Boy to that next level. Yeah, big time. He's great as well. I always uh, liked uh, Jungle Boy. Oh yeah, big time. He's he's awesome, and I would like to see him sort of push forward now. Uh, maybe look at sort of going towards the the TNT Championship. Maybe even sort of challenge MJF, be one of his challenges for the World Championship. Yeah. But either way, I think he's ready for that next step in his in, in his AEW career, Jungle Boy. Yeah, agreed. So yeah, I'm a big, like... big fan of him. Same goes for Ricky Starks, man. Uh, big fan of him as well. Th- these yeah. are the people that they need to be um, establishing AEW on. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 young, the young guys who have all the potential, like, yeah, I'd say Ricky Starks, Jungle Boy, um, MJF, obviously. Darby Allen. Darby you know, you use, use the established names to get these people to that next level. Yeah. So Christian has helped elevate Jungle Boy. Christian has helped elevate... Sorry, Christian has helped elevate Jungle Boy. Chris Jericho has helped elevate Ricky Starks. Um, you could say, you know, Samoa Joe has, has helped elevate Wardlow to that next level. Yeah. And this, this these are the... these. You know, the term pillars of AEW was used before. Uh, th- these are the people that, you know, need to be the faces of, of AEW. But, they, they, you know, they, they need that help to get there. And you need those veteran guys to to get there, to help them get there. Yeah. Lastly, I've been critical of AEW in the past for relying on the, the established names from, you know, who were previously in WWE or whatever. But th- I think they've done it right in the sense that they're using them to help get that talent over or get help, get that talent, not necessarily over because they were anyway, but help get them to that next step in their careers. Yeah. It's same with uh, Billy Gunn and the acclaimed. Yeah. 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 And the ass boys. (laughs) The ass boys as well. Yeah. (laughs) And this was a, this pay-per-view was a real positive step for AEW. Yeah. Agreed. Great to see FTR back. Yeah, have to be back. Do you think they'll hang around now, or do you think they'll disappear when their contract expires? Well, I read today that it it, it might actually be a case of they they are signed to long term deals with AEW. Okay, yeah, and it was all a bit a bit smoke and mirrors. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, because they're blame. But so that's cool. Yeah, and I, I, I like them. Anyway. I like them. Yeah, whoever um, they end up, I'll you know keep watching them. They're great. Yeah, for sure. We're, you know, one of the best tag teams in the world. Yeah, easily. Currently. Um, so, yeah, great to see them back. Uh, I find the situation with the Elite interesting currently. Mm. Um, obviously, the House of Black took the trios championships from them, which I'm a big fan of, by the way. Same. It hasn't really sat right with me with the Elite since they came back. Obviously, they won the trios championships, which was obviously always going to be the plan. Yeah. But I don't know. There's obviously a lot of talk at the minute of Kenny Omega and the Bucks contracts being up and what will happen next. And nobody's really saying much of anything. I know Tony Khan said that he hopes that, you know, would hope that Kenny Omega would stick around in AEW for a long, long time. But I don't know. I don't necessarily feel like the company needs Kenny Omega to stick around for a long, long time. Yeah, you're right. As I say, with all these new... uh talent being established you know there's plenty of people who yeah. can take Kenny Omega's spots and I feel like Kenny Omega is the kind of person who wants to who wants to cross you know WWE off his bucket list you know to say just to say he's been there he's done that yeah um it's like one place he hasn't been he's been all over the world he's never made it in WWE I feel like he'd want to do that at least you know even just for a year or two and I feel like he'd fit he'd, he'd fit in I feel like him and the books they don't they don't really have a place in AEW at the minute, which is a weird thing to say mm. because obviously they were, you know, they were, they were part of the start of the company. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the word elite is literally in the name of the company. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know. There's this, I just, I just don't feel like they have a proper place in the company at the minute. Yeah. I know what you mean. Um, but it could be like uh, like an AJ Styles situation, like you know nobody expects AJ Styles to go to WWE. Um, then something happened, and he's been the mainstay uh, ever since. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you have the same sort of thing with Kenny Omega. You know he could fit in right there. I think he would fit in quite well in WWE. 
especially now with the uh, triple agent charts. I um, think so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I could definitely see that happening. I, 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 I wanted to see it happen. I want to, I want to see him somewhere new. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I would, I would like that. Same with the young bucks as well. I'd, yeah. I'd like to see how they not cope because obviously they're they're a very capable tag team. I'd like to see how they would adapt to being in WWE. Yeah. Kenny Omega, I think, would be fine. It's the Young Bucks who I think, although I think they can do it, I'd, I'd be interested to see how they did it. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Um, yeah. There's some good potential matches up in there as well. Like Delete versus New Day. Would be pretty mm. damn cool. Uh, the Usos. Usos. Yeah. Young Bucks versus Usos. Yeah. That'd be so good. Yeah. It's almost like a dream match, really. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, I want, I want to see it happen. Yeah, Make for happen. sure. Yeah, I think I think it you know it definitely could happen. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of quality of pay per view and direction of the company going forward, AEW has really sort of solidified itself a little bit over the last weekend. Yeah, and really sort of set themselves on a good course going forward. Yeah, I feel like they needed this show to be good. I, like I if agree. It was, if it, if it was like kind of an okay pay per view, because AEW, I feel like AEW has been gone like. A, like a down curve at the minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So it needed that to spike itself back up, which I think it, it's yes, done. Yes, I agree. Uh, big time, because, you know, everyone's loved this pay-per-view. I loved it, from what I've seen so far. Um, yeah. So, yeah, good things going forward for AEW, hopefully. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a 10 out of 10 pay-per-view, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's what I've heard all over the internet. Everyone loves yeah. it. Dave Meltzer's going nuts over it. Of course he is. I mean, fucking <laughs> he, hell. He loves Meltzer, that kind of stuff. He absolutely loves it anyway, doesn't he? Jesus. 17 uh, but it, it was a 10 out of 10 pay-per-view. It really was. It was great across the board. It was just a very, very good wrestling show. And you can't really ask for more than that. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So speaking of big wrestling shows, WrestleMania is not far away at all now. Wow. It's come About three weeks so away. Fast. Yep. We're getting there. WrestleMania, it's baby. To take shape. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> WrestleMania, baby, woo! Yeah, it's it, it's yes. We can see where things are going. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos. Um, of course, it is. Yeah, big time. Jay came back this week and uh, sided with Jimmy and the Bloodline. Um, yeah, great turn, great storytelling again. I mean, this yeah. whole thing has been it's been unbelievable anyway. And I think you know when Kevin Owens eventually does decide he's going to side with Sammy. I think the reaction is going to be massive for that as well. Yeah, big time. I mean, it's funny. Shake their hand, all agrees. The arena will go nuts. I think we're a couple of weeks away from it yet. I think yeah. oh, I think we sort of... I think next week we're going to go... I think we might get a six-man. Yeah, that can make so sense. So I think we might get the, the Usos and Solo against uh, Cody, Sammy, and they'll convince Kevin Owens. Because I saw like... There was a thing backstage where in the background you could see Cody Rhodes talking to Kevin Owens. Oh, I missed that. That's so like good. they're subtly sort of planting the seeds there for that. Mm, interesting. Uh, so, I mean, all that stuff is just great anyway. I love the I've loved the Bloodline and Sammy stuff. I think it's been unbelievable. It really has. And that should absolutely headline one of the nights of WrestleMania, the tag team titles. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be cool with that. Big time. Um, but yeah, WWE's been you know, going strong still. Um, oh, the only thing um, which was a bit meh is Brock Lesnar versus Omos, which is like, yeah. okay, all, all, the, all the people you got to have Lesnar against. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense because, yeah. you know, he's a giant and, you know. But Well, also, just... from what I've read, Lesnar's on his way out. I think he's done. Oh, really? Apparently, he was sort of saying his goodbyes last oh. week at Raw, um, This that he was coming to an end now. So I would I imagine that um, WrestleMania will be his last match. Wow, okay. Against Omos of all people. Great. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, yeah I think they'll probably be looking to establish Omos as something big going forward. I think there's going to be some sort of new Hurt business after WrestleMania. Yeah, I can see that. Interesting. Not sh- uh, You know, fronted by MVP, of course. Sort of a really cool picture Um from backstage on Raw this week. Oh, yeah. With uh, MVP, with um, Carmelo Hayes. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Um, Street Profits and Amos. Oh. Obviously, it was just like a, a, a photo they've had taken backstage of all yeah. of them together. But I think that'd be really cool. Like, turn the Street Profits 
Um, yeah, turn the street profits. Obviously, Habermas is a, a big beast. Yeah. MVP is the mouthpiece. I think that'd be. I think that'd be kind of cool. And obviously, Carmelo Hayes is un- unbelievable anyway. Yeah, so good. But yeah, so, that'd be cool. Actually, I'll th- sound like a cool faction to me. Hmm. Like hurt business two point and you know you could you could even choose to have Lashley in there. Yeah, why not? Still, yeah, turn him. I mean, Lashley's. I mean, I don't know. La- La- I feel like Lashley's having a great run at the minute. Yeah, ever since ever since he won the WWE title, he's been on a getting it. Um, yeah, I loved his run. I loved his run with the title. Yeah, thought it was it great. Helped elevate him to that next level to the main yeah. event. Kind of, he's kind of, he's kind of been stuck in the upper mid card for ages and ages and ages for years, and it's finally mm. he got pushed to the top. And it's, it suits him well. It does suit him well. He looks like a superstar. He looks like a champion. He looks like a heavyweight champion. Yeah. The typical looking WWE heavyweight champion. He looks like that. Yeah, it really does. It's good. Not Definitely, the best. Yeah. Talk, not the best on the microphone. No, um, <laughs> he could do with a mouthpiece. That's why. That's why um, he needs MVP. Yeah, exactly. But I do like him a lot. Me too. So some sort of hurt business 2.0 without them fucking it up. Um, I think that'd be really cool. Because obviously the bloodline are going to wind down, so you're going to need another big faction. You obviously, you've got Judgment Day and stuff. And mm. yeah, I think uh, like a new Hurt Business would be great. Awesome. But they teased out adding a new member to a Judgment Day after Mania, which is interesting. Yeah, maybe Dexter Loomis. Oh, that'd be cool. I can see that. Uh, well, I saw sort of Rhea looking at Dexter Loomis, and there was like a picture doing the rounds on the internet of it. Oh. I, th- I think WWE even put it up and just said colour was intrigued or something like that. Oh, right. Okay. Interesting. I like it. But I think that'd be good. I think that'd be a good direction for Dexter Loomis to take. Yeah. Because right now he's hanging around uh, Johnny Gargano and not doing mm. not really doing much. But yeah, I could definitely see him in Judgment Day. Or, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just give him some sort of direction. Give him some sort of purpose. And I think he'd be good in that role in the Judgment Day. Yeah same yeah I think that'd be good um, obviously John Cena came back on Raw this week yes completely buried poor Austin Theory on the microphone tore him a new one yeah like, Jesus might have been a bit too far <laughs> poor guy because he's like, he could, he's like even if he wins as you said if he wins he still makes him look bad he's like well yeah. great thanks John <laughs> Do you think, I, th- I think job. he wins though right oh yeah I think he wins I can't, yeah, I can't I think, see I Cena I think Theory wins yeah I can't see seeing this sticking around after Mania to be champion. No, no, no. Yeah. And yeah, I'm sure it'll be a good match. You know, John, you know, he's great against help putting people over uh, in matches. Maybe not so much on microphone anymore because <laughs> it was a complete burial. It's insane. Yeah, it, it, well, I mean, I think, yeah, I, 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 I liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It probably was a, a, a little much. But also at the same time, this is, you know, a, like we talked about with AEW previously, this is a, a good way to put the future talent over. Yeah. But you have to have Theory win. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Especially now. You really have to have him win. Yes. I think what else is not um, Mania right now? Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, there was a bit of a pass in the torch as well on Raw with Cena bringing oh, yeah. Cody out and uh, you know it's obvious that Cody's going to be the next big superstar in WWE I mean the crowd is singing his song every week when he comes out yeah he's super over right now I don't think there's a, a any sort of worry that the fans will chant for Sammy at Wrestlemania because Sammy will be doing something good anyway yeah. and if you're going to have the two of them sort of teaming up over the next few weeks against the bloodline I think it sort of it, it cancels all, that whole thing out because it you know, Sammy and Kevin Owens will have their direction going for the tag team titles and Cody obviously has his direction going for the world title. Yeah. That made perfect sense. Yeah. And oh, we had um, Seth Rollins and everyone's favourite Logan Paul uh, doing their thing. They haven't going to have a match on Mania. Obviously, that's more where it's going. Um, yeah. Logan Paul, much better as a heel than as a face. Because no one oh, likes him. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> no one likes him anyway. No, he's a dick. So he might he's as well a make him a heel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's going to be really good as well, I think. Yeah, he, played, he plays the part well, to be fair to him. Uh, he does. I like him. It's his brother who's a knob. <laughs> yeah, big time. Hopefully well, he doesn't... His brother is nowhere near WWE. I hope not. Stay away. He may as well be in WWE with his shit boxing matches, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Logan Paul. Um, he's the lesser 
dickhead out of the two, but uh, <laughs> I think him versus Seth at WrestleMania is going to be really good. Yeah, it'll be great. Seth's been, yeah. Seth's great at, again, making other people look good. Uh, Logan's way better than he should be, as anyone to be. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be going to be a great match. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, uh, obviously, you've got Trish, Lita, and Becky against Damage Control. Yeah, that'd be good. Not my preferable choice of women's tag team champions, it must be said. Yeah, I'd, I'd have had it Trish and Lita. Would it make more sense to me? For sure. I don't see the purpose of them actually having the tag team titles. I mean, is Lita just on a full program now? Is that it? I mean, is she going to be around after WrestleMania? Or yeah, I don't know. What? I mean... What, what, what's the situation there because if you're going to be a champion you need to be around you know we've had it with these fucking part time champions or whatever but Lita's going to need to wrestle every week yeah true forgive me or, you know and defend to, to defend the championships yeah I imagine they'll turn it back like Mania damage control that is I, um. I would quite like the idea and bear with me with this <laughs> is have Chelsea Green and Carmella win the women's tag team titles okay i'd be okay with that uh but have damaged like you know have becky and lita defending the titles on raw before wrestlemania yeah have damage control cost them and have chelsea green and carmella as the unlikely hilarious tag team champions because i think they would be yeah. i think chelsea is doing a brilliant job as with that gimmick that she's got at the minute yeah it's great yeah i agree with it that'd be pretty fun and it's i know that they've made another women's tag team they've done it <laughs> they successfully made this that's episode. how easy it is guys <laughs> yeah. don't need to, it's not difficult congrats <laughs> it's, it's yeah. not, it's not just, figuring it out it's not just Natalia and some random person from the back it's an actual acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not just Natalia and maybe Dana Brooke <laughs> yeah or well, Dana, in, insert woman's name here you Dana know Brooke, Tegan Knox uh, Shotty Blackheart or just Shotty now um, yeah just yeah whoever you it find. is difficult it really <laughs> is difficult that week. I, I would definitely like to see Chelsea Green and Carmella as the tag team champions. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, me too. That'd be cool. And also, you know, it also adds a little bit more to this feud that Trish, Lita and Becky have got going on with Damage Control. Yeah, agreed. Because the, t- the women's tag team titles aren't needed in this feud. Yeah, you're right. There's three of them. So <laughs> it's just kind of pointless having a belt yeah. with two people and a third person. If that makes sense. So have Damage Control cost Becky and... Um, Lita. Yeah, makes sense. To me. Um, and then the women's tag team titles can have their own match at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I like it. Good booking. There we go. Good booking. Get me in there. Yeah. Why oh, did I hear Vince was apparently at Raw this week? Yeah, I heard he's got a mustache as well. What <laughs> sporting, the fuck? Sporting mustache. Yeah. Uh, God, was he trying to disguise himself? <laughs> yeah. No, I never recognised me with this mustache. Yeah, <laughs> if I if I grow a mustache, they'll they'll never know it's me. Yeah, it's like fake glasses, like some glasses yeah. or something. <laughs> I'm undercover. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, like <laughs> Rancho Marx. That's it's just finished backstage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Colin McMahon. <laughs> yeah, I'm Vince's brother. <laughs> exactly. Right, okay. Okay, uh, Vince, we know you. Yeah. Apparently, he was in Gorilla all night, and he was in a pleasant mood, and yeah. maybe you know, he apparently, he was there to see Cena. Apparently so, yeah. But as long as he's not booking matches, whatever. Just, just whatever. <laughs> I mean, Raw was very enjoyable this week, it and was. it has been very recently. So, I, I still, I, you know, don't get me wrong. There's no doubt that he had a finger in the pie of a Moss versus Brock Lesnar. Oh yeah. But you know, he's he's clearly not booking full time. No. It's good, thank God. <laughs> Well, yeah, of course. Also, why is he growing a moustache? <laughs> Who knows? Vince McMahon hasn't had facial hair in 168 years of him being alive. <laughs> yeah. Why now? You know, it's very strange, very random. Maybe that's why. You know, maybe when now now that I'm retired, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and grow some facial hair. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Sure. Vince? Go for it. Yeah. You creepy old <laughs> pervert. Yeah, uh, just adding to his pervert status by <laughs> growing a moustache. Pretty much, yeah. So I suppose, might as well look the part if I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> Yeah, I may, I may as well just... I may, hey, look, if, uh, if they're going to tar me with that brush, I may as well just be it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus wept. So, yeah. <laughs> so weird. 
It just gets weirder as well, Vince. Like, if, if, if Vince wasn't weird enough, <laughs> just having a moustache makes him a hundred times weirder. Yeah, it's, it's so random. Like, yeah. Why a moustache? Why now? You're like 407 years old. <laughs> yeah. Why now? Like, not one time have I ever seen Vince McMahon with any sort of facial hair. Yeah, no, same. I think, wasn't there like a rumour saying he doesn't like a beard because he doesn't want the like the facial hair to win or something stupid like that? There was something like that, something wasn't like there? That, yeah, <laughs> it might, might be facial hair, it might be something yeah. else, but something like that about beards. He doesn't it like. was something like that, yeah. Yeah. Stupid bit. What a fucking idiot, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he now he's got a moustache, apparently, which yeah. is... I want to see a picture of it. I, I saw somebody had photoshopped a moustache onto a picture of Vince yeah. stood randomly next to the footballer Dimitar Berbatov. I'm not sure how old this picture was, but somebody had photoshopped a moustache onto him and then someone else had photoshopped a Mexican hat onto him <laughs> and called him like Vincente or something like that. <laughs> nice. Which is hilarious. But yeah, Vince has got a moustache. That's the big takeaway from Vince being backstage at Raw. Yeah. Good stuff. The biggest, biggest see John Cena and he'd grown a moustache. Yeah. Biggest news in wrestling. Vince has a moustache. Yeah, also, you, you'd want to take the piss out of him, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, if you've never seen him with a moustache, you'd want to be like, well, what's that on your face? But you don't, because he's still the majority owner of the company. <laughs> and you could be like, hey, he took the piss out of my moustache. Get, <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of him. <laughs> or he'd make him grow a moustache and parade that around as a gimmick on Raw. Yeah. Remember, remember when, I'll uh, teach Chad Gable for taking the piss out of me. <laughs> remember when uh, Bobby Roode had a moustache for one week? I do remember that. That was weird. Yeah, it's like it looked like it's going to be his new gimmick, and then you never saw him again with the moustache. Yeah, amazing yeah. how a moustache can be a gimmick. <laughs> yeah, anything. Can be Vince McMustache. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I like the I like the moustache mountain gimmick. I want to be a part of it. <laughs> Is it Vince, Vince Tyler Man- Bate and Trent Seven just fucking mustache mounting going forward. They're <laughs> uh, great. Yeah, bring back Trent. Can you imagine Vince standing on the turnbuckle like twizzling his mustache like Trent Seven. <laughs> uh, I'd watch it. I would also watch it and perhaps pop a little bit for it because Maybe. it would actually be quite funny. I think. <laughs> uh, but seriously, don't put Vince back on TV. No, no, no! Don't, don't actually do that. Yeah, no, don't, please, don't. No. Mustache or no mustache, Vince has no place on TV. No, so take a picture. That's all we need. Yeah, just so, somebody sneak a picture on your phone and put it on the internet for for us to see for our enjoyment. But that, that's it. That's where it ends. Yep. <laughs> uh. Imagine him with a full beard. I mean, it's weird enough to think about him with a mustache, let alone a full beard. Full beard. That'd be, that'd be something special. A bearded Vince. Yeah. Maybe someday. <laughs> maybe he gets, maybe yeah. gets sent to jail and he'll come out with a massive beard. Like in his mugshot, he's got like a beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe he's growing... A f- he, I mean, I've no doubt that Vince McMahon can grow a beard. So he's obviously shaved it into a moustache, which is the weirdest fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird old man. Yeah, I mean, we knew this anyway, but it's he's weirder now. The older he gets, the weirder he gets. Yeah. Just at fucking 400 and something years old, just decides to have a mustache. <laughs> maybe Brock, like maybe when Brock was trying something new with his man bun, he got into Vince's ear and it was like, howdy, Vince. <laughs> Cowboy. Howdy. Yeah. Howdy, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> Not Brock Lesnar's voice at all. Um, <laughs> Vince, try something new. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe Vince is influenced by Rick Boogs and his yeah, mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Vince! What yeah. a fucking weirdo. Yeah. So that, that yeah, WrestleMania is coming up, and uh, Vince's got a mustache. Yeah. Mustache mania. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of this week's podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorted. We got it. <laughs> because we, we, sort of we need to have a picture of Vince with a Super Mario mustache on the thumbnail. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that's sorted that thumbnail this week. Yep. Job done. We sorted it. <laughs> so not only have we perfectly booked the women's tag team division this week, mm-hmm. uh, we have the perfect thumbnail. Yeah. Perfect thumbnail, perfect title, perfect women's tag team. 
Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. There you go. It was worth a couple of weeks off. No more <laughs> weeks off now. We're, we're fully back at it. We're back next week again. Back yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for the build to WrestleMania. I'm excited for the direction that AEW is taking now. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for WWE 2K23 next week. And yeah, I'm just excited. Me too. Maybe next week I'll have a moustache. I hope so. Maybe not. You're just inspired by Vince. Don't be a sex pest, <laughs> <No>. but <laughs> have a I'll leave that part. Yeah. Yeah, leave, <laughs> leave that part out, but have a moustache. Yeah. We'll see. If I can get, Randy, you want to have a moustache for a bit? If I can get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, I'll get a moustache. It just <laughs> creates 1,000 Gmails <laughs> yeah. to, to, make, to, to subscribe to Finn's channel 1,000 times. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's a, How far off are you? I might have to start it. That'd be like 20 or something. 29, I think 30. There's a way okay. to go. <laughs> There's a little way to go. Yeah. Okay. It's, literally, it's basically, basically a new. It's, I've had. It's an old channel, but I never got that many subscribers. I think I lost a lot as well. Uh, just because I haven't uploaded anything in like seven years. <laughs> Somewhere about just that. upload a video of you shaving your beard into a mustache, and there's your thousand subscribers. Oh, there you go. Yeah. This is. Shaving the perfect moustache with Finn steel. Yeah, okay, perfect. A million views right there. Exactly. <laughs> it's a bit electric Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. Done. <laughs> yeah, give to uh, anything else? We'll see. Do it. Yeah, go and subscribe to Finn's channel. <laughs> okay, do, go do that. <laughs> for sure. Um, and Twitch. And that as well. And again, to grab YouTube channel and Twitch. Yeah. And Sony's yeah. channel on Twitch. Well, no, no don't, don't subscribe to mine. Just okay. just subscribe to Games of Grabs. That's where all my shit is. All right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just can't be asked. You know what I mean? I can't be asked maintaining my own channel. That's fair. I'd rather just put everything onto Games and Grabs. Like all the podcasts on the podcast feed, all the any videos that I do just on the Games and Grabs feed. It's just easier for me. Makes sense to me. Yeah. But yeah, it's all good. Cool. Anything else you want to talk about this week? Um, I think that's about it, really. All right. With that said, this has been episode 170 of the Games and Grass podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash games wraps. Go follow us on all the social medias. Go follow Finn, myself, and Steve. Uh, enjoy added time. Enjoy Finn Steele's content. Enjoy the clubhouse. And we'll be back next week with a brand new episode of the Games and Grass podcast. My name is Sunny G, and I've been here as always with Finn Steele. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks very much. Goodbye.